You might think your mutt's history is a mystery. Uh, I know I did. Uh, that's why dog DNA test companies are cashing in right now. This is Oliver. He's my very good boy, a, a 10-year-old mix. So you say mix, yeah. and Oliver's very cute. But what did you think he was when you got him? Okay, we were told he was half lab, half golden, but he's big. He's 120 he's pounds. A big boy. He's a big boy, maybe a little overfed, but he was 110 lean. So he's a big boy. You sit. Come back here. Uh, he's, he's a very good boy, and we thought he was partially Ridgeback and Bloodhound because he's so big. But uh, you'll see uh, what we got after this story. Yes, so is it worth your money though? Several Verify viewers have asked if the results of the doggy DNA tests are reliable. Josh Sedora Wiz verifies if they can really determine your dog like Oliver's pedigree. He's friendly. All right, get it. Tony and Michael have always wondered just what their 11 year old rescue maca is. Well, we have been told he's a lab and a wire hair pointer mix. We have been always really curious to know. And they are not alone. Americans are spending billions each year on their furry family members. What's going on? What's going on? Market research firm Zion says dog DNA testing has become a $235 million industry with several brands on the market. But can you really determine a dog's breed from these DNA tests? Let's verify. Our sources are Haley Rando, a Smith College data scientist, and this study her team conducted on the accuracy of these tests, the American Kennel Club, our own Verify review of three direct-to-consumer dog DNA tests, and Elaine Ostrander, a geneticist at the National Institutes of Health who created the Dog Genome Project. The science of dog DNA testing started in Ostrander's lab three decades ago. Since then, genealogists have figured out how to decode and unravel the canine DNA sequence. Dogs and humans both have about 17,000 genes in common, and we can move back and forth between the canine and the human genome and make use of that information. Unleashing a process, it's a lot like how human DNA tests can determine ancestry. Being able to tell what breed your dog is can be done with very, very high fidelity. So yes, you can determine a dog's breed through DNA tests. But for those of us not working in a genetics lab, not all tests you see advertised are created equal. Each company analyzes your dog's DNA differently. When you submit a dog's DNA to a company, they're basically running an experiment and they're collecting data and comparing it to data they've collected previously. So we tried out three popular tests, ranging in price from $70 to $100. The gums and cheek. On this purebred Dachshund Versace, the maybe lab wire-haired pointer mix maca. Get your toothbrush. And my own rescue mutt, Bo. Good boy. We took samples from each dog for each test, and just for good measure, I also submitted my own swabs to see if they could detect the difference. Connie Delaney's American Kennel Club champion Dachshund has a lineage and a pedigree that goes back generations with the documentation and certification to prove it. How surprised would you be if it came back with anything other than what you, you know it to be? <laughs> I, I would absolutely be amazed. Sure enough, all three tests for Versace came back 100% Dachshund. Results for our rescue pups were more, well, mixed. Remember Maka? These were his owner's guesses, but both Embark and Wisdom Panel found he's mostly American Pit Bull Terrier and Australian Cattle Dog. Bo, who I always thought was some type of lab, is also mostly Pit Bull Terrier, according to both Embark and Wisdom Panel. Good boy, Bo. According to Ostrander, getting a percentage of Pit Bull in a rescue animal isn't surprising. It does make sense because if you got your dog from some kind of a rescue, that is a breed um, or group of breeds that often a end up in, in rescue situations. But when we take a look at both of the Mutt's Viagard Acumetrics results, they were very different. Bo's test identified breeds that didn't show up in either of the other tests, while Maka's said he's 100% Labrador Retriever. Rando says Viagard Acumetrics was an outlier of all the tests her team looked at, just like it was with us. Both Embark and Wisdom Panel explain their methodologies on their website, including how many genetic markers they look at. Viagard doesn't. We asked them about their results, and they told Verify that the quality of samples can impact results, but that it had no further comment once those results are released.
Embark and Wisdom Panel told Verify mixed breed results can differ because companies use different algorithms in reference databases. As for my swabs, neither Embark nor Wisdom Panel said it could process my sample, but Vigard Acumetrics said, I have some French bulldog in me. <laughs> the American Kennel Club cautions pet owners about using any DNA tests to make health-related decisions for your dog because the industry isn't regulated. One thing the AKC says you can look for when choosing a test to determine a breed is this lab certification. It's the highest federal standard for DNA testing, and all three companies say they have it. But it is just one piece of the puzzle because you should also consider how those companies analyze the results. All right, you ready? Back at Tony and Michael's. Pitbull, cattle dog, super mutt, <laughs> whippet, and German shepherd. What? That's crazy. While the results aren't what they expected. Nothing like we actually <laughs> no. thought it was. Okay, interesting, surprise. <laughs> Ultimately. We still love him, he's still amazing and perfect. Hi, baby. You're a whippet. Who knew you had whippet in you? <laughs> With your Verify, I'm Josh Sidorowitz. All right, so we were told half golden retriever, half lab. Like I said, we thought maybe Bloodhound, maybe Ridgeback. We yeah. weren't buying it. Basically 50-50. I think we might have the results. Basically 50-50, half lab, half golden, and all, all very good boy. That's all I know. Right now he's looking at the treat that our... Uh, one of our producers, Brian Kugler, is holding up, and he's being fantastic. He's 100% so. treat driven. There that you we go. Know he for is. Sure. Okay. There you yeah, go. He's just like, <laughs> I'm going to go get his, because he's been a good boy, get his treat, and he likes our, our, our producer, Brian Kugler. So I, I like the advice that they gave just about just don't use it to make base medical decisions. As a curiosity, fine. Do you think the reporter is wondering why he came back as part French Bulldog? Come here, buddy. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. <laughs> I don't know. But again, that reporter, I hope, is all good boy, too. <laughs> I think he might be. I think he might be treat driven, I hear. Good, boy. good job, Oliver. You're a very good boy. Sweet 10 year old dog. He is. All right, much more for you. I hear, I wish it was just the Oliver show going forward. I know, we would, we would do it all day.